if there's any time that you're gonna like start nerding out over the numbers and the specs on your gear, I think that um, Sleep Systems is a good time to do that. What's up friends? My name is Miranda and this is another episode of Miranda in the Wild. And in this video, we are talking about sleep systems or how to sleep comfortably at camp. Bam! Hold on. This is my show, gosh darn. So before I get too deep into the video, I just want to clarify what I mean when I say sleep system. Your sleep system is comprised of two things, your sleeping bag and your sleeping pad. So those two things have to work together in order to get the maximum amount of warmth at night. There's nothing else you take away from this video. Let it be that. Sleep system equals sleeping bag plus sleeping pad. They're like the Batman and Robin. Or I feel like the sleeping pad is like the, it's like the Batmobile and the sleeping bag is like Batman. It's like Batman can't go anywhere without a Batmobile. Right? Um, it's like Catwoman and her cat. Yes, yeah, so it's like Catwoman and her cat. It's like Spider-Man. Yeah, never mind. This is okay, hold on. We're just reel this back in. <laughs> We're gonna cover this idea of sleep systems in really two categories. First being your sleeping bag and your sleeping bag temperature ratings, and then your sleeping pads and the R value or insulation value of your sleeping pad. Great! So let's start with sleeping bags. So here I have two sleeping bags in front of me. These are both women's specific sleeping bags. Women's sleeping bags are often built different than men's. Oftentimes men's sleeping bags are going to have less space in the hips, whereas women's sleeping bags are gonna have more space in the hips. And this is just to accommodate for differences in body types. But also with that, with a men's bag, you don't want that extra space there because that's just additional air that you have to warm with your body. So your sleeping bag's not gonna be as warm. All of that to say that if you are an extra hippie person, you might want to look at a sleeping bag that's gonna accommodate for something like that. And if you are a very narrow person or if you're very narrow through the hips, you might wanna look for a bag that will not have as much space through the hips, which might be a traditional men's bag. Most sleeping bags that you'll find are going to have a standardized temperature rating. Unlike shoes where like a nine and a half might be different than in one brand might be different than a nine and a half in another brand. It's just standardized across sleeping bags. There are two different numbers that you'll often see on these standardized temperature ratings. And one of them is the lower limit rating. And the other one is the comfort rating. At the comfort rating temperature, you'll be comfortable in the sleeping bag. Whereas at the lower limit rating, that's just like the lowest temperature at which you can survive in the sleeping bag. And I don't know about you all, but like when I'm going out and backpacking, I am not trying to just survive. I'm trying to be comfortable and be, you know, enjoy my time out there. When you're looking at the temperature rating on your sleeping bag, make sure that you're paying attention to whether or not that is the lower limit rating or the comfort rating before you make your decision on a sleeping bag. So for example, this sleeping bag, my Nemo Disco sleeping bag, is rated at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is my sleeping bag that I use year round. But if I'm going to sleep in a temperature that is colder than 50 degrees at night, I will be adding a liner to this so that I can sleep comfortably. So this is my sleeping bag liner. And this little flimsy piece of fabric actually adds 20 degrees of warmth to my sleeping bag. You slide your body into it like this and then you can climb into your sleeping bag. And then this hood piece goes up around the hood of your sleeping bag as well. If you sleep cold, get a sleeping bag that is warmer than you think you're going to need by like 10 degrees. Because obviously every body is different, you know? And like, I might be cold sleeping in a 30 degree sleeping bag when it is 50 degrees outside and you might be sweltering hot. In my experience and in like purchasing sleeping bags, I have found that having a 20 or a 30 degree bag plus a liner tends to be like the best system for me. Is uh, that yeah. clear? Yeah. Um. Oh God, it's begun. So let's talk about sleeping pads. All right, cool. Sleeping pads. Awesome. <laughs> what was that noise? It's not I make when I'm on my sleeping bag. I just fart a lot. You just fart a lot, yeah. Just pack your sleeping bag with farts. Sleeping pads are the second part of your sleep system. And with sleeping pads, you wanna be paying attention to the R value or the insulation value. So the R value refers to basically how well the sleeping pad resists heat transfer. If you're a builder, you might know this from like R values of insulation in walls. I learned that when I was building out my van. Just like with temperature ratings on sleeping bags, sleeping pad R values are standardized across the board. With an R value, the higher the number, the better that the sleeping bad. With the sleeping bad. With the sleeping bad. <laughs> damn it. This is broken. <laughs> 
So when we're looking at the R value on a sleeping pad, the most important thing to know is that the higher the R value, the warmer the sleeping pad is, the lower the R value, the less warm it is. So R value just refers to how well the sleeping pad resists heat transfer. So our bodies generally create heat. So we're not vampires. So we create heat and the ground is cold. And so heat wants to go to the colder thing. So all that warmth in our bodies is trying to make its way into the cold ground. So it doesn't matter if you have a zero degree sleeping bag, if you're sleeping on the ground and it's 20 degrees outside, you're gonna be cold because all of the heat from your body is just being transferred into the cold ground. So no matter how warm the thing on top of you is, it's not gonna make a difference. Your body can't retain any of that heat. That's why having a sleeping pad is so important. If I was a vampire, if you were, <laughs> what is the R value of a coffee? If you're, if you're a vampire, you just want to sleep in a bivy. bivy. If you sleep in a bivy, I'm convinced you're a vampire. There's no other reason to choose that for yourself. So I have three different sleeping pads here that have three different R values. So this one is an open cell foam or just a foam sleeping pad. This is the Thermarest Z Light. This has an R value of two. So it's really a summer sleeping pad, or it can be used in conjunction with other sleeping pads to increase their warmth. This is the Nemo Tensor. This has an R value of 3.5. This is not a super high R value, but this sleeping pad is one that I use year round. I love this thing and I can use it with my Z-Lite if I need a little bit of extra warmth. This is my old car camping sleeping pad. This is an REI sleeping pad that we no longer make, but the R value on this is a 5.3. So this is quite a warm sleeping pad. Chainsaw man. I thought we had our fill with you. What is it with chainsaw men? An important thing to know with R values on sleeping pads is that they do stack. If I add this sleeping pad and this sleeping pad together, the R values are going to stack. So the two of these combined are going to have an R value of 5.5, which is plenty warm for sleeping in the winter time. It is really important to go into a store and lie down on them and try them out if you can. So a sleeping pad that's thicker is gonna probably be better for side sleepers. So really like figuring out what the comfort of the sleeping pad is, is also gonna be a good part of, of making the best, most efficient sleep system. All right. That's sleep systems. Hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of how sleep systems work and how you can understand the temperature reading on your sleeping bag and the R value on your sleeping pad to design the best sleep system for your camping and backpacking trips. If you have any other questions about sleep systems, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, hit the like button, subscribe to the REI channel, and I will see you all in the wild. Bye. Actually, I'm totally assuming it could be chainsaw woman. It could be chainsaw person. Chainsaw people!